trio of privacy checklists from Apple. Welcome in to episode 221 of The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. I'm your host, Ken Ray. I came across three checklists put out by Apple the other day. They're simple, they're to the point, and they're potentially life-saving. We'll look at checklists for if you want to see if anyone else has access to your device or your accounts, if you want to stop sharing with somebody with whom you've previously shared, and if you want to make sure nobody else can see your location. We're shaking the stalkers on this edition of The Checklist, brought to you by SecureMac. sounded flip. We're shaking the stalkers. Uh, Flip is what I do. I know it's a serious topic. I'll tell you, years ago I had a friend who started dating a guy. Went a little fast, but you know, she was happy and he seemed very happy. Then he seemed a bit intense. And then one night she came home and found him in her apartment. Her third floor apartment, to which he did not have a key. This story has a happy ending, and that he went away after that could have been a lot worse. What happened to my friend was pre-smartphone. In fact, almost nobody even had a cell phone at that time, and the people who did have them, it was like holding a brick up to your face and talking. I'm not saying this list would have helped her. I'm saying sometimes things go wrong. People change, or they're not who we thought they were. Now, maybe you're worried about a domineering ex, maybe an overbearing parent. Maybe you're just somebody who worries. That's cool. There's even stuff on these lists that can let you know whether you've been snarled in a phishing scheme. Now, before we get into the list, I have to give credit where credit is due. I didn't find these lists myself. They are put out by Apple, but it was Filippo Valsorda. He's a cryptographer and a security guy. I don't know how I came across him, but he posted all three of these lists on Twitter. Although, posting a link to one is kind of posting a link to all three. I'll explain that in a bit. Let's dive into the first and most comprehensive of the three lists. A checklist for if you want to see if anybody else has access to your device or your accounts. First of all, know your devices. Or really which devices are tied into your Apple ID. You do this by going to Settings, and then you tap your name or your icon if you're accessing on an iPhone or iPad. If you're on a Mac, you tap the square to the right of your icon and name that says Apple ID. There you'll find all of the devices that are active with your Apple ID. Now, I did this recently, and I was kind of freaked out by the number of devices tied to my Apple ID, Nothing bad. I just have a whole lot of Apple devices, all of which I could identify. If you see a device that you can't identify, or maybe a device that you passed on to somebody else without realizing that you had left your ID attached to it, I guess. If you see a device that you can't identify or that shouldn't be on that list, Apple suggests that you tap the device name and select Remove from Account. Next item on this first list. How many fingers are you holding up? Or how many faces are you making? Check to see if there's an unexpected alternate appearance or additional fingerprint set up on your device, is Apple's suggestion. Now, for Face ID, this one is kind of strange. In settings on a device with Face ID, you scroll down to where it says Face ID and Passcode. If your phone gives you the option to add an alternate appearance... You don't have to worry. There's only one appearance in there, and it's the one that you use to unlock your device. But if you go into Face ID and Passcode, and it's not giving you the option to add another appearance, that means there are two appearances in your device. If you didn't set up two appearances, somebody else has set one up in addition to yours. If you're not cool with that, and... Seriously, why would you be? You'll probably want to reset Face ID, which you can do right there. 
As for devices with Touch ID, you go into Settings, you tap Touch ID, and you see how many fingerprints can unlock your device. If it's more fingers than you put in, again, remove them all and set up Touch ID again. Third item on the list, with our devices more secure, Apple's next step on the checklist, sign in to Apple ID dot apple dot com with your apple id and review all the personal and security information in your account you're looking here to see whether any information has been added or changed by somebody else apple also says if you have two-factor authentication turned on review trusted devices for any devices that you do not recognize if your account doesn't use two-factor authentication turn it on now Now, I'm not going to contradict Apple on that. I will say I did find this part confusing because I couldn't find a list of trusted devices, even though I do have that option turned on. Under two-factor authentication on my Mac, Apple says your trusted devices and phone numbers are used to verify your identity when signing in. While no devices turned up for me in that list, I do have a trusted phone number there. You have to, I believe, to turn on two-factor authentication. And while Apple doesn't suggest checking that phone number, you'll want to. And you want to check any additional number set up. And if it's not a number that should be set up, you might want to take it off. Item four, review the installed apps on your device and look for apps that you don't recognize or don't remember installing. If you come across something that doesn't look familiar, Apple points out that you can look up any apps you find in the App Store to see what their purpose is. If it looks suspicious, you might want to nuke it. Item 5. This one deals with mobile device management, or MDM, profiles. Apple says these are usually installed by employers, schools, or other official organizations. They give whoever installed them, or whoever got you to install them, additional privilege and access to a device. This was one of the things I was talking about earlier. I actually had an email from a friend a few months back who said that they had had a family member who had been tricked into installing an MDM profile on their device, giving who knows who access to what kind of information. It's kind of hard to tell. You can look for an unknown MDM profile on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch in Settings, General, Profiles, and Device Management. Now, if you don't see Profiles and Device Management in your settings, Apple says your device doesn't have any profiles installed. If you do see that, and the profile wasn't installed by your work or somebody who should have installed it, you should be able to delete the profile and probably want to do so. And the last item on this list, Apple suggests reviewing a couple of other checklists, uh, which we're going to do. Have you taken advantage of the many sharing features featured in Apple's ecosystem? If you have... Do you still want to share with those people? If you haven't, well, depending on your situation, you may still want to make sure that you really aren't sharing with anybody. This checklist deals with if you want to stop sharing with someone whom you previously shared with. First item on this list, check family sharing settings. This you can do by going to settings and your name Then scroll down to Family Sharing. If you're in a family, the piece says, the names of the family members are visible. If you're part of a family, you can remove yourself from the family group as long as the account lists your age as over 13. If you're the family organizer, you can remove anyone over the age of 13 from the family. And obviously, if there's somebody there who shouldn't be there, you can get them out. Item 2. Potentially worse than somebody keeping track of your data is somebody keeping track of you. In the Find My app, 
which is right above family sharing on iPhone and iPad. Select the People tab to see with whom you are sharing your location. If there's somebody there with whom you no longer want to share such information, tap them in the list, then tap Stop Sharing My Location. You can also stop sharing with everyone by turning off Share My Location in the Me tab. Item 3. If you want to stop sharing pictures, start where the pictures are. In the Photos app, says the Cupertino Company, go to Albums and then go to Shared Albums. Select a shared album and tap People to see the owner of the shared album and with whom the album is shared. If you're the album owner, tap the name of a subscriber for the option to remove them. And if you're a subscriber, select Unsubscribe from the bottom of the screen. You can also delete any photos that you have shared. Are you sharing events? Calendars come up in item 4. In the calendar app says Apple, select calendars, select a shared calendar, and tap info to see with whom the album is shared. If you're the calendar owner, tap the name of the subscriber for the option to remove them. If you're a subscriber, you can tap delete calendar from the bottom of the screen. Are you sharing your workouts or activity through Apple Watch? Sharing's not necessary forever, and item 5 can help you stop that. To do so, Apple says in the fitness app on your iPhone, tap the sharing tab, tap the person icon to see who you share with, click on the person's name, and select either remove friend or hide my activity. Item number 6 involves stuff on your Apple device, but... Stuff that's not from Apple. Plenty of third-party apps will let you share information with other people. If you're worried about those, Apple suggests reviewing the apps you've installed to see if any of them are sharing information. Those apps should have instructions to stop sharing, or you can simply delete the app. And finally, if you're not running the latest version of iOS which Apple suggests you do, and Secure Mac suggests you do. But, if you're not running the latest version of iOS and have concerns that somebody else may have physical access to your device or someone else set your device up for you, Apple says you can back up the information from your device and restore it to factory settings. Apple offers links to instructions on both of those things. They're Really too involved to go over here, though. Tell you what, instead, we will include those links in the notes for today's show. You'll be able to find those in the notes for Checklist 221 at securemac.com slash checklist. got one more list to hit. We'll talk about making sure no one else can see your location in a moment. But first, a word about MacScan 3 from SecureMac. Recent numbers from Canalis say Mac sales grew 16% last year. Gartner says Mac sales were up over 22%, while IDC says they were up 29%. While the three firms do not agree on the numbers, they all agree on one thing... Lots of new Macs in 2020, which means lots of new targets for bad guys. Protect your digital self and stuff with MacScan 3. MacScan 3 is a great defense against malicious software attacks aimed at your Mac. It's developed by Secure Mac, trusted names in computer security and developers of exceptional security software for the Mac for over 20 years. MacScan 3 detects and removes Mac malware, catches keyloggers, removes tracking cookies, and provides full-range or targeted scanning, all without crowding up your hard drive or slowing down your machine. Sign up for a free 30-day trial today at securemac.com slash MacScan. Then once you decide to buy, buy for less. You can take a little off your subscription to MacScan 3 with offer code CHECKLIST. Try it first, 
Watch it kick those tracking cookies to the curb. Then when you're ready to buy, buy for less with offer code CHECKLIST at securemac.com slash MacScan. We've got our devices locked down. We've stopped all the sharing. There is one more thing we want to do. This checklist covers what to do if you want to make sure that no one can see your location. We'll do this by degrees, starting with the big one, or Apple does anyway. When they say no one, they do mean no one. Apple says to stop sharing your location with apps and services for even a short period of time. Go to Settings, Privacy, Location Services, and turn off Location Services. This stops apps on your device, such as Maps, from using your location. Nobody is notified when you turn off location services, but some features may not work as expected without accessing your location. Now, item two covers scaling that back a tiny bit. You may be in a position where you need some apps or services to know where you are. Maps, for example, or a ride-sharing app. Apple says you can give individual apps permission to know where you are by going to Settings, then Privacy, then Location Services, and allowing only certain apps to use Location Services. Item 3 doubles down on not being found. Apple goes over the Find My feature on this list as well. The company says to stop sharing location in the Find My app, go to Settings, Privacy, Location Services, Share My Location, and turn off Share My Location. If you're concerned somebody may have access to your Apple ID, you can also temporarily turn off Find My iPhone in this tab. Item 4 has the company talking on this list as well about ending sharing your location with a particular person. Again, you do this by going to the Find My app, going into the People tab, selecting that person or people, and tapping Stop Sharing My Location. Now, that person won't receive a notification that you've stopped sharing, though they'll also not be able to see you on their list of friends. If you re-enable sharing, they will get a notification that you have started sharing your location again, so heads up on that. And on the last item... Just like on the last segment when we talked about sharing data through third-party apps, there are apps out there that will let you share your location with other people as well. If you haven't turned off location services in privacy settings, take a look at the apps you've installed to see if any of those are sharing your location. They should have instructions on how to stop sharing if you want to. Now, I know I started off with a scary story about a stalker. I will say, though, even if you're not worried about a particular person or a particular situation, being familiar with these various settings isn't a bad idea. Also, if you know somebody who needs to know about these settings, please share this show with them. It's scary stuff. It's ugly stuff but there's no telling how much good it could do. If you're looking for more security news and how-tos, the place to look is securemac.com slash checklist. There you'll find notes for this episode, for the last show we did, for every show we've done so far, and you can actually listen to every show right there as well. And read along with the notes. It all starts in one place, securemac dot com slash checklist if you like the checklist could you do us a favor review the show wherever you found it and please tell other people about this show and thanks if you have a question you would like to ask or a topic you would like to hear us hit our email address is checklist at securemac.com That address again is checklist at securemac.com. And if you can't remember that, please do remember this. You're listening to The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. And we'll talk to you next week. (laughs) 